Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. I hope you had a great day. Let's take a look at some new malicious compliance stories, where people conform to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. Thank you for subscribing to the channel and for hitting the like button. Today we have 4 great stories. If you enjoy them, please subscribe and hit the like button. And now let's begin, shall we? The first story is called Under No Circumstances. About 5 years ago I was working as a production supervisor for a metal forging company. We had recently acquired a transmission part for a well-known American motorcycle brand. This part was being made on a hydraulic press. We had trouble with the part melting our dies due to the unique shape of the part and the fact that this part should have been made on a forging hammer press, not a hydraulic one. We were getting very behind on the customer orders due to the fact that we typically had to either repair or replace dies approximately every 1500 pieces. This is in contrast to other parts that had die lives exceeding 6000 pieces. My manager, who had only been on the job for about 6 months, pulls me in the office and tells me on the next one do not shut down for any reason, unless the forge press breaks down. I tried to clarify that the dice would not last and I would have to stop the process occasionally to replace dice. He was emphatic that under no circumstances was I to shut down the process. He even went so far as to email me a reminder of this. Hopefully you can see where this is going. Over the next one we do not stop even though my quality control guy is losing his mind over how bad the parts are. I tell him don't worry, it's all on me and my head, as he doesn't know about my manager's demand. We set a production record, even though maybe a thousand out of the four thousand pieces we produced are good. The next day, the plant manager and quality director puts me into the office. It's explained to me that I'm probably gonna lose my job, due to the fact I blatantly allowed non-conforming parts to be produced. I asked if I could print an email for my defense. I get quizzical looks, but the plant manager okays it. I print off the email from my manager, stating not to shut down for any reason, and hand it over. My manager gets reamed, and I get a firm reminder that regardless of demands, we must assure quality over quantity. The only reason I was not terminated was the fact I was acting under explicit direction from my manager. The next story is called Expensive Cakes and Fine Wine. It was 3am in the morning, and my entire family was asleep after a long ride back to our hometown. While having one of the most pleasant dreams that involved having expensive cakes and fine wine, I was rudely disrupted by the sound of our family's car alarm. My father went out to check out what happened. Apparently our neighbor was drunk and had fallen somehow. He hit our car hard enough for the alarm to activate. The entire issue could have been solved with a simple apology and everyone could have gone back to their own lives. But if that happened, I wouldn't be telling the story. Our neighbor was known to be a rather proud person and had loudly declared a few times that no one had ever won an argument against him in the past. So it was not surprising when he decided to push the blame onto my father when he realized everyone in my house was watching him. My father tried to talk things out and asked if he needed help. But the possibility of a peaceful discussion was going down pretty quickly when we saw that our neighbor's face was agitated. None of us knew what was going on, because as far as we knew our car was parked in front of our house and there was nothing wrong with that. It also didn't help that our neighbor looked like a centipede that lost 98 legs and could barely stand properly without trying to use our car as support. The conversation went something like this. Are you okay? Do you need help? The neighbor looks around. Your car. I fell because of your car. Uh, I'm sorry that happened. Move your car. Or I'm calling the police. Go ahead. My car is in the right place. While we were waiting for the police to arrive, his outburst had woken up nearly everyone in the vicinity of our small neighborhood. Our neighbor was loudly exclaiming how he was right and how my dad didn't know the rules here because he doesn't live here. My father kept his poker face up all the way till the police came. My neighbor then granted himself a glamorous show of him being arrested in front of everyone. He was charged with being a public nuisance and for causing damage to someone's property with mischief as well as drink driving later on, after the police found out there was no way he walked home from the bar 30 kilometers away. Although the fall only caused a small dent on the car's boot with slight damage to the paint job, which would have been easily fixed, my father got 1000 US dollars in payment for damages. We had a great dinner the next day, which consisted of expensive cakes and fine wine. The third story is called, just doing what he told me to do. A few years ago I used to work at a tire store. I had a boss named Steve and his boss was Pete. Also note that the shop floor across the vehicle base was rather large. Now Pete was the manager of the store and just occasionally peeked out, usually towards the end of the night. But Steve would watch the shop floor like a hawk, criticizing everything we did while well, he did basically nothing. One day I'm told to run dads, 
which basically just means getting all of the dead used tires to the other end of the store to wait for pickup. We do this because that takes up a ton of space, which you need to work on vehicles. Naturally, being a track at leave and loving running, I would sprint after depositing tires back to get more. Well, Steve notices this and pulls me aside. He tells me running isn't allowed, just because I'm a kid and that I need to walk like a proper professional in front of customers. Here malicious compliance. Can run, eh? Guess I'll just leisurely walk each individual tire, no matter how small, and walk back. Because we were already short staffed for the night and trying to close, meaning everyone was working fast as hell, not only did I look out of place, but tires were piling up taller than my head. This is not only annoying but dangerous as hell and can also result in serious car damage. Pete walks out and sees this and asks Steve what's going on. Steve tells him I'm clearly not taking my job seriously and they call me over. I tell him I was just doing what Steve told me. Pete is mad since he wants to go home, so he tells me to sprint all I want to the merry tune of Steve being berated. From then on, Steve never said a word about me running. The last story is called Devil's Candy. I used to work in a candy store back in high school, a pretty awesome job. We had a pretty huge selection of candies to choose from, including a paper pound candy case that took up most of the store. We sold a decent amount of licorice in different flavors, including salted licorice. If you are unfamiliar, it's just black licorice that has been dusted with powdered salt ammonium chloride, an extremely salty and bitter chemical. We had a few different versions of it, but one stood out for how extremely salty it was. Seawater is less salty than that licorice. Pure salt is somehow less salty than that licorice. We would always have new employees eat a piece of it as initiation and share a few laughs at their facial expressions after the first bite. One day, an older man comes in and rudely asks where our salted licorice is. I guide him over to the licorice section and show him the choices we have. He immediately goes for the saltier than salt licorice coins. I try my best to dissuade him, explaining that this licorice is extremely salty, but he quickly turns on me. Young man, I've been eating salted licorice for my entire life. Just shut up and weigh me out a pound so I can get the hell out of the store. Cue the malicious compliance. I gladly weigh him up a pound of the salt coins and take him over to the register. I ring up his devil candy, hand him a receipt and take a step back. The old man starts walking to the door, but luckily takes a piece and pops it in his mouth before leaving. Oh my god, what in the hell is this? The store is now dead silent. He storms back up to the register and starts screaming at me. This is the absolute worst licorice I've had in my life. How dare you let me buy this? Get your manager, right now. You deserve to be fired for selling me this. Before I can even say a word, my manager quickly comes up to me and motions me aside. Sir, I was listening to your transaction and he made multiple attempts to talk you out of your selection. Normally, I'd be more than happy to issue you a refund, but considering your language and treatment of my employees, I'm going to need you to get the hell out and never come back. The old man was so taken aback that he stormed out with his tail between his legs and we never saw him again. Turns out the only thing saltier than the licorice was his attitude. And now, it's your time to shine. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories? I hope you enjoyed today's video. And I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.